Susan Smith has been arrested and will be charged with two counts of murder in connection with the deaths of her children, Michael three and Alexander 14 months. Tomorrow marks a somber anniversary in South Carolina. It's been 25 years since Susan Smith killed her two young sons by strapping them inside her car and rolling it into John D. Long Lake in Union County. Now that night, she told police that a black man carjacked her and her vehicle with her sons still inside. As you heard, three-year-old Michael and one-year-old Alex. After nine days, though, Susan, Susan Smith finally confessed saying she did it herself. Smith is now serving a life sentenced at Leith Correctional in Greenwood and is eligible for parole, believe it or not, in 2024. The case received national attention. Susan Smith, Smith and her then husband David appeared on national news pleading for their boys safe return. I know right here what the truth is. Um, I can I can from some I can see from their side uh, why they have to do the things they have to do. Uh, but the Lord and, and myself both know the truth. I did not have anything to do with the abduction of my children. Well, nothing she said there was true. The boys were found in their mom's car inside John D. Long Lake, like Darcy said, and her husband was not involved in the crime. Now, J.R. Barry was covering this uh, 25 years ago when this happened. And, you know, we say 25 years, J.R., but to South Carolinians, it really doesn't feel like it was that long. I remember the night the phone call came in from Hugh Mon, who was a sled spokesman. He called up the newsroom on a Tuesday evening and said, hey, we've got this case out of Union County. We've got this mother who claims that her car was carjacked with her two small children inside. Uh, he gave me the details, ladies, about what she claimed happened that night. Immediately, I said to the sled spokesman, come on, you got to be kidding me. No mom mm -hmm. would let some guy ride off in her car mm -hmm. with the children strapped inside. But he told me that night, he says, well, that is the story that she is telling us, and that is the story that we have to go with. And years later, I spoke with the sled chief at the time, Bob Stewart, who said all along authorities had doubts about Smith's story. The first night when the sheriff called and asked for assistance, so we sent a team over and one of the first agents that went over was a forensic artist who uh, works with a, an alleged victim and, and does a pretty good interview uh, and as well as doing the, the artist sketch. And when he completed his work that night, he pretty much indicated that he thought there were some problems with uh, Susan Smith's story. So that was Bob Stewart just a few years ago, I believe on the 20th anniversary of all of this. This sparked, as you might imagine, a lot of outrage, not only in Union County where this happened, all across the state of South Carolina and nationwide. People were outraged that this woman could come forward and tell such a lie and put people in such an uproar. Now in 2015, she wrote a letter in prison to give her side of what happened. She says she's not a monster and that she was a good mother and loved her boys. Smith says something went wrong that night. She was not her Herself, and there was no motive because it was not planned. Well, well, she says there's no motive, but the prosecutor said there was a motive here. And what was that? A 23 year old Susan Smith wanted to have a relationship with a wealthy man in Union County, mm. a man who had told her he didn't want a family. And for that reason, they say uh. she strapped her children inside the car and rolled it in John D. Long Lake. So that's the motive that prosecutors used. There was some thought that they were going to try and get the death penalty here. David Bruck, a high profile attorney, took the case trying to keep her off death row. Instead, she got those 30 years, but as you heard a few moments ago, she could be eligible for parole in five years. Now, I know you have followed this story. Do you know anything about her time in prison? What can you tell us? I know she hasn't been the model prisoner. She has been written up at least five times on wow. various charges. There's drug use. Uh, also, she had sexual relations with two correctional officers. That was one she was housed here in Columbia. She has since been moved to Greenwood. So. When her probation hearing comes up in a few years from now, all these things that have happened will come back, back and they'll, they'll look at it and they'll decide then. You were in the courtroom during the trial. Talk to me about 
who Susan Smith was in that courtroom. We heard a lot about Susan Smith inside that courtroom, some of it very disturbing testimony. We heard that she tried to commit suicide at the age of 13. Mm. She tried to commit suicide at the age of 18. She was sexually molested by a member of her own family for many years. Her father killed himself when she was only six years old. So the defense here tried to tell the jury, look, this woman has some mental issues. This woman has some problems. This woman doesn't deserve the death penalty. This woman doesn't deserve to die for these crimes because she's pretty messed up. Now, JR, we talked a little bit about the husband, but you know, again, he was not a part of this plan. He believed her that somebody had taken their children and believed that they were missing for that time period. What do you know about what he's been doing for the last 25 years? David Smith has remarried. Uh, for, at last check, he had two daughters. Uh, he visits the grave sites regularly of mm -hmm. Michael and Alex. Uh, he has tried to put this behind him. He's tried to move on. He says he's always, of course, going to remember his sons. Uh, but he has no contact with Susan Smith, as far as we know, and he has just moved on with his new life with his wife and their two daughters. I kind of have a feeling there will be public outrage when she's up for parole and that the public will have something to say about it. Probably so, and it could be that the offenses that she has committed behind bars might come back to bite her when it comes for probation time, so there's no guarantee she's going to get probation, but she certainly will probably be asking for that in about five years. Interesting, the players in this case, what's happened to them over the last 25 years. As we mentioned, David Smith remarried. He has two kids. The prosecutor, Tommy Pope, is now a House representative representing Union County in the State House here in yeah. South Carolina. The sheriff, the man who said Susan Smith has a, been arrested in charge, he served 90 days in prison. He got caught up in a federal corruption probe. As for David Brooke, he's 70, and he is still trying to keep people off of death row. He takes cases each and every day. It's wow. hard to believe it's been 25 years, and I think the, the overwhelming feeling for us in the newsroom is it was such a horrible crime, it just seems like it happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. It does seem like it happened yesterday, and you know what? John D. Long Lake, that boat, the boat uh, ramp, the ramp yeah. Yeah. it's been closed because two years after all of this happened, seven people drowned one night. They went to that very same boat ramp. Mm -hmm. The car went back into the water. Among the seven dead, several children, so they just made the decision, let's shut that boat ramp down. We'll move the memorial yeah. for the children yeah. here. We'll make it safer for people who want to come and pay respects. It's too easy to get cars in and out of there. JR, yeah. thank you so much for joining us all for right. that update.